What is up guys, Jeremy here and welcome back to another Lock Plus video. So I decided actually back to back after I recorded the first episode to do a second one. As you guys can probably tell by the video format, it is not how I normally record. Uh, and it just makes it easier to show you guys like uh, how I'm going to do this stuff. Now, um, if, you, if you guys are just tuning in, I would highly recommend to watch the first video that I did on Lock Plus. Otherwise, you're going to be completely lost uh, as to what I'm about to show you. So watch that video first. Uh, link will be down in the description. But we are on my lock screen and hopefully my recording works and uh, audio should all be good. This is going to be a longer video. So go ahead and grab some popcorn and a soda and sit back. Um, now what's nice about recording like this is you guys should be able to watch this video in uh, portrait and it should take up your screen. So it looks like how it looks for me, like you're looking right at your screen. So when I pull, pull down on... Here we go, pull down on to lock plus. For some reason it's being a little wonky. It might be from touch flow, there we go. So it seems there's a grab range that I just must not have known about. Can't grab it down here, but you can grab it up here. So uh, this is totally, there's there's no script for this video. So I, it's probably already like completely random to you. So I got touch flow, um, screen recording. Touch flow is the dot you guys are seeing. So you can see my fingers. This is gonna annihilate my battery, I already know it, uh, just because I'm recording and messing with the tweak. But, so Lock Plus, if we go into the creator, um, I kind of touched base with this in the last video and how advanced it is. So if we go ahead and open up some stuff here, um, I kind of showed you guys in the first one, I downloaded a theme. Um, I didn't really mention that you can literally just start from scratch if you want. I mean, you can go in here and add at a clock, uh, let's do, actually let's do day, and we can do Thursday. So I mean, as you can see, I can start creating this, this widget essentially, or theme from scratch. You don't have to actually download one. Uh, for the most part, I usually just start from scratch. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, and I'm just gonna go over like elements and stuff. Um, some of the widgets I've created, I've actually used to Lock Plus to create them. Uh, the ones that have like the cool backgrounds with like the Siri background or um, what's another background that I had like the the skull one or the rainbow the RGB effect one those those backgrounds I created in Pixelmator on my iPad with the Apple Pencil um, and then I imported them into Lock Plus as a overlay so I did not create those with Lock Plus but all of the information on the widget, I did use Lock Plus to create it. So I'm just gonna make a simple widget for you guys to start here. So we just started out with the day. Um, I know what all these icons are here. So if I click on the, the double T's there, it takes you to the top, you can size it. You can move it up or down for fine tuning. Uh, so one of the first things I like to do is you guys will notice there's a box around Thursday. That's its kind of holding point. I don't know the proper words for this, but what I like to do is I like to make the width a lot wider so that I know that the text is always going to properly fit into its bordered area, essentially. So I usually expand it. A quick, easy thing to do is to just type out uh, how much of an expansion you want. Usually like 300 is probably pretty good. And then the middle icon here is the alignment. I know what all of these, I've used this more than you guys can imagine. So. I like to center it. I like to center it on the axis of the lock screen. They use those buttons there. Each one of these has a little information pop up if you guys want to read. Like I said, there's gonna be quite a bit of a learning curve um, for all of these different sections. Like you can copy styles and um, you know go from one to another. Um, but I mean, you have like padding, you have your Z indexing, which is uh, what layer is it? So you can have a top layer, which is gonna be a higher number, a bottom layer, which is gonna be a lower number. You have your opacity controls, you have overflowing, you can change the background color. You have a uh, text color here. So if I wanted to change it to that blue, and as you guys can see, this is a pretty straightforward color picker. You can even enter in the hex code right here. If you guys have that, you can paste in a hex code. If you're color matching things, you can drag these boxes around to wherever you want them to be. 
you have alpha controls right here. Um, it does save your colors as well on the left. So all of those colors that you guys are seeing are colors that I have used. So um, like I said, this is just uh, just super powerful. It's, it's really amazing. We'll go back to white, why not? Let's, oops, let me select on white, there we go. Choose it. Let's change the font. So you can go to the open font section here. You have script fonts, applied fonts, and then you can close fonts. I have installed custom fonts and they all start with AAA, as you guys can see on the left right now. So if you read the name of these fonts, uh, these are ones that I have manually downloaded from Defont and imported them into the file system for Lock Plus. Um, you can do it pretty easily. I, I mean, I guess if you guys want to see how to import fonts, I'll maybe we'll do a continued. Maybe this will be a series. I don't know how popular it's going to be, um, but this is this old school tag font is just freaking cool looking if you ask me. But um, as you can see, it looks like some of the letters are being cut off, and that's because of the box. So what I need to do is I need to raise the height of that box. So apparently I don't think maybe much of any of it was cut off, but if you ever have things that are cut off, it's because you need to change the height and the width, and then you need to change its line height, and its line height will move it up and down as you guys can see. And I like to center it uh, pretty close, just like that. And now we have just a simple text. Another cool thing is you can add shadowing to it. So you add your shadow here at the bottom, you can click on it, Let's drag this box out of the way so we can see the shadowing take effect on here. You have your blur. Let's bump it up to like two. We have your Y offset and your X offset. So this is pushing the shadow straight down. As you guys can see, this one will push it to the right. If I go positive, it'll push it to the left. If I go negative, I somehow invoked labellum. Um, but you know, you have cool shadowing effect. I mean, that right there looks pretty cool. Just just the way it is. Uh, so you can just close it out and you got your shadow. Apparently I can't close my shadow. Uh oh, we're frozen. Okay, let's try that. There we go. I notice sometimes if things get weird, just lift up on the bottom of the screen and then it'll reset. Like I said, June needs to update, so update this a little bit. It's a little buggy on iOS 14, but it works and I've been using it. Uh, so I mean, we got, you know, a text. One thing I like to do sometimes is with the text, you can go into the colors here. If you go down, there's a text gradient. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So here's your gradient for the text. Um, you can add, so you can have it be multiple gradients. You can click on top to bottom right here. So if you want it to go left to right, right to left, whatever. Angles, I mean, it's just the, the controls of this are just ridiculous. Let's do something cool. Let's do like a pink to a deeper, pink I guess if I can click it to I don't know blue to green I guess and if we apply the gradient one thing that's a little weird is it it looks messed up right now let's kind of change so you can see I don't know if you guys can see this or not but you can kind of adjust the gradient like so. So now it looks like an actual, there we go, like a regular gradient. You you can move the sliders around and then adjust the gradient. Let's apply that. That looks pretty cool. Now, when you add gradients, there's a weird bug where it doesn't look correct with the shadowing. So I guess we won't have a shadow for this. We can just delete it. So there we go. I mean, that's what we got so far. I can exit the creator, take a look at it on the lock screen. Kind of neat. I don't know. We're just playing around here. Let's pull open creator again. All right, let's add, I don't know, let's add some weather because that's cool. So add elements, go to weather. You can go to, go to icons here. You go to weather. And then if you click on the icon, you can, uh, scroll down a little bit. You can change the icon. Here's all the different weather icons you can choose from for whatever you want to use. This one looks pretty cool. This is a little weird too. So you have sizing and, um, width, uh, height and width. And sometimes they go a little wonky. So as you guys can see, it kind of snapped down into size. I can move it up here. You know, if I wanted to do something crazy like that, have it in front of the, the day, I can exit. And as you can see, the weather got real weird. So we need to adjust that. And it looks like the width needs to be pushed out quite a bit. These can get a little weird. Sometimes you really just got to kind of eyeball it. So I think that's about normal. 
as a perspective. We can exit. So there we go. I mean, we have a, a, a rainbow kind of Thursday with um, the weather icon. I mean, there's a ton of information you can put into this. Uh, if you go to add elements, you know, you can go into clock. You can do strings is pretty nice. So like if you wanted, you know, a string for the date, you can basically choose any of these. This is another bug that drives me nuts. Sometimes if you accidentally click on it, it starts creating panels. Yes. Okay. Let's go back in to the clock here. Let's just do, I don't know. You got month text, March. I don't know. I got two elements there. So you can add the elements. Like I said, font controls. I'm trying to think of what else I could show you guys. Um, you do, let me get rid of these. So they're out of our way. You can add shapes as well. Um, if you go to miscellaneous, you can go to like a box. You have all these different custom boxes you can use. Uh, and I mean, from here, like if you wanted to make a, a background for it, you can totally do that. I just like to do it in a different app because I can do it a lot faster uh, in Pixelmator with a with an Apple Pencil on my iPad than I can by doing it this way. Um, like you have your radius, so if you want rounded corners, you can do that. So you can see the corners are beginning to round. We can go width. I don't even know how long of a video this is yet, but... I'm just kind of going with it. So of course you can make it, you know, longer. You can make it taller. The dropper is the color. You can add box gradients. We'll say no. We'll just change it to, I don't know, sure, gray. You can put it up to wherever you have things. And like I said, Z indexing is how you're gonna lower it. So if we, find the Z index. You see, you can drop it down in value and it drops it below everything. You can exit, take a look at it. So, I mean, this is completely garbage looking, but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea. I'm not trying to create anything really, really cool. Just want to show you what kind of stuff Lock Plus can actually do. Um, there are widgets to choose from. So if you want to add like a battery bar in, um, you can do this to start with the battery bar and you can edit this to be how you want. So, I mean, like if you want it a bigger bar, it's very slow. Maybe it's not letting me edit it. That's a very weird value. Let's try this a different way. Let me get rid of that. I think there's a different add elements templates this might have been yeah battery bar this is where i like to get the battery bar so this is a, a panel and a panel can have multiple elements and that way you can move it around and you can actually adjust i think you can adjust no you cannot adjust all elements at one but you can click on each element here and if you don't want the name battery there you can get rid of it you can i believe you can maybe not there we go so you can click on the, I believe that would be the background, it's still connected to the panel. There we go, let's get that out of there. There's the panel. You can actually delete the panel. Now I guess that gets rid of the elements too, but you, that's how I make battery bars is you take those elements and you can start um, adjusting those from the panel. I guess the panel is tied to it. I forgot about that. There's there's a lot to this and it's hard to remember everything. So as I go through here, I'm just kind of toying with things uh, just, just to show you. So the templates is a bunch of cool stuff. You have music, you have, I mean, you have forecast icons if you wanted a forecast. And of course, like I said, you can independently go through and you can change all of the icons if you wanted a different icon to, you know, something different, like, I don't know, that one maybe. And as you can see, it changed it across the board. Uh, just because it is in a panel. Um, very, very powerful tweak this is. I think that's probably all I'll do. Of course, from here you can export it as a SB HTML or a, a export as a widget, and then you can use it like with Zen HTML like I showed you guys. Um, you can export for front page. That's something I'm not gonna get into yet. Front page is a, is a, a whole nother demon. 
Um, you can upload the theme to Lock Plus if you want others to be able to use it. Uh, it's just really cool, all this different stuff you can do with it. And uh, you can make some really cool looking widgets that you can use on your home screen or lock screen. So uh, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Just wanted to give you a little bit more in depth with Lock Plus. I know what I created looks like complete garbage, but I just wanted to give you a demonstration of some of the some of the things you can do. This is something that will take time for you guys to learn. Um, I, all I can recommend is to just just play around with it. You'll start to see how things work and what you can do with it. It's really, really powerful. It's like a, I don't even know, like a Photoshop editing. I don't, it's not even that. It's more than a Photoshop. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's basically a widget creator tweak. It's, it's pretty incredible. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this more in-depth video. If you did, definitely throw me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot here at the channel. And if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to click that subscribe button. This has been Jeremy, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.